Right guys, we're back with another episode. Thank you for the support on the first one today. That is much appreciated. Where we left off, we were going into the match against West Ham at Wembley here for the Community Shield final. It's looking like we have a very good chance of getting our first bit of silverware. Even though it's only the Community Shield, it's a bit of silverware, right? I'd love Arsenal to win that in real life. Obviously, you have to win silverware to get in that position. But, you know, regardless, it's a good match. We're playing a very strong side here. And uh, hopefully we're going to go ahead and get the win because it would be a great start to the season. Um, we're going to be looking at the full match because, um, I'll be honest, it's not the most entertaining match in the world. And uh, I didn't really fancy cutting it into the highlights because it'd be like maybe a couple of minutes. Um, it wouldn't be long enough. I wanted to show you guys the full match and I want to talk about each individual player that I've got in the team at the moment. Where I think I need to improve the squad, what kind of players I need to be bringing in. And uh, we'll also talk about the youngsters we were looking at in the last episode because... Um, I think they're going to be very good additions to the squad. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the goalkeeper. Chesney, I, I can't believe he hasn't grown. We're at this point now, we're going into the second season and he still hasn't grown. It's a real disappointment if you ask me because I thought Chesney would be one of the better players when I started this career mode. I thought, you know, like in FIFA 13, I thought he would reach around the 86 mark after about three or four seasons. And at the moment, it's looking like he's going to be maybe 82 max which um, although it's good enough I'm not looking to replace him just yet um, we'll see we'll see how that goes it might be that I decide to replace him um, for now I think he'll do but I would like to see a bit more growth from him he's, he's, he's growing incredibly slow he hasn't gone up one single rating in his goalkeeping stats whatsoever um, and it's not good enough Viviano has obviously gone back he was only on loan for a season and I believe I sold Martinez. I'm actually not sure about that one. That was a while ago. It might be that I've still got him in the reserves. I just haven't looked at him recently. So we do have a backup. But maybe, just maybe, if Chesney doesn't start growing in the next few weeks, especially to, uh, as soon as the season starts, maybe come January, I'll look at replacing him. And now, if you look at the rest of the defence, at right back, we're doing good with Montoya and Jenkinson. I think Montoya is a very decent player. Um, again, I'm looking looking to get a few more ratings out of him. He's still only 77. I'd like him to get to the you know the 80 mark by the end of this season. Um, it's nice to have the whole team 80 or more, if you know what I mean. Um, but he's a good player, and you know what? Getting rid of Sanya might have been a massive mistake on my part, but in the end, I'm actually very happy with uh, Montoya instead of Sanya. In real life, you know, there's, is, is, there's no question. Sanya is absolutely amazing this season so far. His crossing abilities are very nice. Set up quite a few goals. Um, but I think Montoya will do a very good job this season, especially because we're in the Champions League, remember? And uh, he'll provide that cover that we need. Sanya was too old. It's as simple as that. In FIFA, he is too old. It's, it's frustrating. And then, obviously, in, in terms of, you know, old players, we've got Mertesacker and Koscielny as my two main centre-backs at the moment. Um, that was close, almost scored an own goal there, I think. Or maybe Carroll got a touch on that, I'm not sure. Um, Mertesacker is turning 29, I think he is 29 now, in uh, in my career mode. It's just on the edge of his prime, you know, I think he is going to start to really lose his skill stats. He's already started to lose his, you know, acceleration, his sprint speed, all his physical stats. What a tackle from Gibbs, by the way. Can't wait to talk about him in a minute. Um, I think Mertesacker maybe has one season left and then I've, I've got to replace him. And I'm thinking Renokia would be a perfect replacement in January when he, you know, he'll be free. He's only got 12 months left on his contract. I think it's actually 11 now. And uh, that would obviously be a free transfer, which is amazing. We've also got Unkalu coming in, possibly. He is also running down his contract at Lyon and I will be able to get him free. It's Marseille, sorry, not Lyon. Um, I'd be able to get him for free. So imagine that, Renokia and Nkalu coming into the squad. Koscielny is only 28. He's still got a season and a half maximum, maybe two, um, so we can still use his. And then obviously Gibbs at left back. There's no way I feel like I need to replace him. He's probably my favourite player in the squad right now. Um, you know, the awards video I was meant to be doing, but because of the internet issues, I just could not download the footage from YouTube and then include it as a montage. I could do an awards video where I don't use the footage and I just talk about the players and, you know, explain why they've won certain awards if you wanted me to. Um, but I, I kind of want to give it away in a way. The, the player that was going to win the best player of season one was Gibbs. For me, he was absolutely incredible. Yilmaz close in second with all of his goals, but Gibbs has been solid for me. Such a good left back. Cuts in, he's been creating assists. He's actually scored a couple of goals as well, um, which is really good. Uh, moving on to the midfield, I don't want to talk too much about the midfield because it's definitely my strongest point in the team. As with Arsenal in real life, obviously the midfield is very strong. We've got Ozil there sitting behind the strikers. 
Kazula out on the left who I, I like Kazula. I, I feel like I'm wasting him out on the left. You know, just because it works in real life, it doesn't mean it works in FIFA. He's he's not a winger, if you ask me. He's definitely more of a central player. Whenever I play him as a centre attacking midfielder, he does so well. And even though I'm missing Urzil, he does he does play well. And uh, sometimes I don't really miss Urzil when I'm using Kazula in that same position. But I don't really I don't really use him very well on the left. When I get the ball with him, I end up just you know kind of passing it as soon as I can. Because he can't really beat any defenders. He's not fast enough. He's not strong enough. Um, he's better cutting inside. And that's half-time, by the way. Nil-nil at the moment. Very difficult to break West Ham down. And I'm sure they're struggling to break us down as well. That's why it's nil-nil. There you can see I haven't had a single shot on target, which is uh, absolute, absolute travesty. It's the final. Come on. It's the Community Shield. You want some silverware, guys? You've got to continue and win this game. So um, I think, for me, I might just try and bring in Draxler. Now Draxler is a player I've been looking at for a long time. He is an amazing player. He can play in the middle but mainly down the left mid. I think he's actually a cam but he can play on the left mid so mainly a central attacking midfielder. Just imagine Draxler on that kind of left mid role cutting inside with Ozil. It's going to be very 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 good so maybe that's something I'll do in the future. Maybe in an episode down the line maybe try and do a swap with Kazula and Draxler. I think that'd be very good. I do want to replace some players. I want to make the team feel fresh for season two, you know, and um, it's career mode. It's all about buying players and improving the team. It's not about how realistic it is, which players leave the club and all that stuff. I don't want people complaining because I don't have many Arsenal players left over by the end of the series because that's what's meant to happen, you know. It is career mode, so maybe that's what I'll do. Um, on the right, we've got Walcott and Oxley chamberlain Very happy with those two. I don't see any need to, to bring in anyone else. We've also got Miechi who can come on. <clears throat> and some other players as well, like Gnabry, or Gnabry, however the commentators like to say it these days. I, I don't like saying Gnabry. It makes me feel like I'm a retard saying it like that. It's, it sounds like it should be a silent G, but, you know, it's German and I'm not German, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he is he's decent, you know. He is a future first-team player for me. And hopefully, just hopefully, he's going to get better this season, up towards the 70s mark, so I can actually feel good about playing him. Because, you know, I'm better off playing Miechi, who's like, what, 77 overall now? You know, much better than Nabry in this game. So, um, we'll see how that goes. In terms of the centre of midfield, we've obviously got Ramsey on the left and uh, Gundogan on the right. It's very strong, but I mentioned it in the last episode. They're not, they're very similar. They're not very tall. They're not very strong. Maybe I'm missing that height, that extra strength, and that's why I've inquired about Goretzka possibly joining the team uh, from Schalke. He could bring that height and that bit of strength and a bit of power going forward that maybe Gundogan or uh, Ramsey can't bring. Maybe I can just kind of, you know, rotate the three, bring one in and just hope that, you know, it's enough to get me through the season because... I think Gundogan, obviously, he has to play. He's one of the best players I've got right now. Ramsey, he's good. He's up to 81 now, I think it is. 81 overall, so he is still growing. But there's potential to maybe get a bit more depth there, especially seeing as, uh, Kuz not Kuzula, as Arteta and Flamini are both getting relatively old now and probably won't be at the club for too much longer, which is awful. I really like Arteta on this game. He's a very balanced midfielder, great passer, great tackler. I wouldn't want to get rid of him, but unfortunately he's 32 years old, which means, you know, he is going to start decreasing soon. Um, up front, we've obviously got Yilmaz and Giroud. I like them. Yilmaz is getting to an older age now. I knew I'd only have maybe two, three seasons max with him. Um, but it's, it's if I want to change it up, do I fancy having a different striker, if I'm honest? I kind of do. I, I kind of feel like I fancy having someone fresh up front who's going to bring more goals. Yilmaz definitely does have negatives. He's not the... The most agile players on the ball, he can be slightly sluggish like Giroud. Maybe I want to go for someone similar who's, you know, tall, quite strong and relatively pacey. It's definitely good to combine those three. Um, you know, someone like Benteke, maybe that would be a very good signing. Kind of like a switch with Yilmaz and Benteke. We'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of decide nearer the time because for me it's not just about... Um, how good the player is it's me enjoying playing with them and I think with Yilmaz it is getting a little bit stale so maybe I could bring in a new striker to uh, to kind of revitalize this first 11 and have someone else that plays up front instead um, I'll definitely be keeping Giroud there's, there's some sort of you know sentimental value there I want to keep some of the core Arsenal players like Koscielny um, you know, I want to be keeping most of them. Urzil is definitely staying. I mean, he's—I think he's 90 overall now. So there's no way I would sell him. 
And uh, I think really my bench is strong enough as well, especially if I do bring in Renokia and Unkalu. I'm definitely done with my defence. Maybe an extra midfielder, a nice youngster like Goretzka. And like I said, a striker would be good. But you can see we're in the 83rd minute now, guys. It's still nil-nil. Really struggling to get that goal. And I, I don't want it to go to penalties at this point. I'd already been playing for quite a while. I wanted to get this game over and done with and get a win. But we get really pounced on here with Diame. He's going through on goal. We're not going to let him score this. We've got so many players surrounding him. And it's a great tackle in the end. I mean, that was an absolutely amazing tackle from Mertesacker. who was really missed in the Man United game in real life. Really missed indeed. It was a real shame. Maybe he would have cleared that goal or not. By the way, watch the vlog if you haven't already. I did like a little vlog talking about the game. If you missed it, you could always go back. And Ozil, of course, out of all the players who's going to win me this game, goes through on goal in the 90th minute, and he scores an absolute belter. How he gets this over the keeper, I don't know. It was very lucky. Great technique. Great finish there. West Ham, I'm so sorry. I feel bad. They did so well to win the FA Cup last season. And unfortunately, they've been undone by a bit of German brilliance in the 90th minute there. And it's, oh, it's so, so, so cruel. It really is. I feel sorry for them, but I'm happy we've scored. It does mean there's only four minutes of injury time, and then we can potentially win our first bit of silverware of the season. Insigne's going on the run up here. Such a pacey mofo. Look at him. He's finding the space. He's going to pass that one up over to Gundogan, who hits the keeper, basically. Very unlucky not to get that on target. Imagine finishing this game 2-0 when it was 0-0 in the, in the last minute. That would have been pretty special, and what a goal that would have been. So pretty much the final few kicks of the game here. We've got ourselves a corner. Very close to scoring again. The referee is having to postpone the end of this game so much. Get ourselves another corner. It's a lovely cross once again. Two very good crosses in a row there. And West Ham are actually going to be able to clear this one away. And there we go, guys. Our first bit of silverware of the season. The real season is about to start. I hope you're getting excited. We're going to be bringing some players in. But until then, thank you for watching this. And I'll see you in the next episode soon.